here on Blacktail Mountain today looking for huckleberries and doing some other foraging while we're at it. Uh, this is our second year of doing this. Our first year didn't go so well as honestly we didn't really know what a huckleberry bush looked like. Uh, no shame in that game. Uh, but once we did learn last year we picked up a couple of tricks and decided to test them out today. So come with us as we head to the mountains looking for huckleberries. berries all day long and then you get dry you know you keep dropping that one huckleberry that one big one that you're waiting for it's like no well we're taking a little bit of a break even though we're up here in the mountains it's still pretty warm and this is hard work it's a one berry at a time and you got to go for quite a bit of distance to get huckleberries that's why they're such a sought after thing here in montana and Cold. and why uh why people on the internet right now are to for are charging 55 dollars a gallon for these things so, after a little break, we'll get back at it. Why forage? Why spend my mornings with my head in a bush and more than often not explaining my presence to curious passerby? For me, it's about sustainability, connecting and respecting nature, and better still, free food that often costs a pretty penny in fancy restaurants. I love nature and I love the planet we live on. There's something rewarding about gathering your own food that can never be explained in words. Historically, this kind of knowledge would have been passed down from generation to generation. And admittedly, people lived very differently 50 years ago. There were certainly more wild space spaces around, but somewhere, it seems, this knowledge has been lost. I do bump into people occasionally who comment on how their parents or grandparents knew these things. Nowadays, the people who remember are often grandparents themselves, which makes me sad. I educate where I can and encourage those who show interest to learn more. A final note on mushrooms, in the form of a quote from one of my favorite authors. All fungi are edible, some are only edible once. I certainly take that quote very seriously and have invested my time and energy into learning as much as I can, as often as I can, about wild mushrooms and edibles. Well, we had a really good day at uh, harvesting our huckleberries. It's the first uh, time of this year going out, um, and just now starting to really uh, get blooming. So we got about a gallon or so uh, all together, uh, picked and, get, and bagged and cleaned. And uh, we thought we'd take some time and just make, uh, make something up today with it so we can enjoy some of these as, as we're going to freeze the rest uh, for use during the winter, uh, fall and winter for pies and some um, Sherry pie filling. So uh, let's get started with that. I need to find my mixer too.
one thing about this house is we don't have enough plugs and so that's a future project for this winter is to add some additional plugs to the house so that we don't have to use the ones one wall outlet in the uh, kitchen delicious huckleberries. I can't wait to eat these. All in all, our harvesting went pretty well today, and uh, we managed to get quite a few uh, huckleberries. Uh, considering they're individual berries, we got uh, we got a pick. We uh, managed to get about probably about a half or three quarters of a gallon to a gallon of uh, berries total. So not bad for the first round of the season. We will be certainly going out probably uh, quite a few times this summer, and uh, we'll see about make, getting some more. But it's just one more thing to put away for winter. <laughs>